Thank you for stopping by, coming to the channel, Deb Chanel's 40s World, where we break down reviews and give our own opinions and our own commentary. Okay, the social media is about a buzz today. Yes, it's about its business as usual. The buzz meter has gone to where it exploded today. Trending hot topic in the social media ways. On YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, any type of platform you want to get on and talk about gossip or entertainment news that strike our thoughts and provoke us to have opinions on it. Yes, yeah, none other than when we get out there, me twittering, when we be Instagramming, when we be YouTubing, and all other formats. We get in and talk and have a discussion about an individual. Okay, y'all. Like I said, it's trending on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Tumblr, as well as <coughs> Twitter. The hot topic we're going to be covering today is on none other than reality star. Uh, or past reality star that she wants to get back in the limelight. It's none other than Phaedra Parks. Let's get into a discussion. Daily uh, Mail, this is a uh, magazine put out by the UK, da Daily Mail, and they made their American version of it, uh, did a story, a long story, with Phaedra Parks and how she's faring after her husband has gone to jail and, you know, still caught up in some litigation, uh, was still serving some time. But, I don't know, she's in her with romances after the fact or just prior to the fact when she had that little tryst or some kind of love affair infidelity going on with uh excuse me Jamal Bryant which is Giselle's Bryant ex-husband and he also happens to be a pastor don't know how that all fit in but it just is what it is then Phaedra was giving us a little tease that she may be in a relationship or trying to start something with Shamar Moore. But we all know Shamar Moore got tired of the rumors because Phaedra Show wasn't squashing him. She kind of like it because he's nice ice candy. Ice candy, ice candy. He, <laughs> or you want to say eye candy. Okay, however, she wants the rumors to continue to be associated with somebody as seasoned as he is in the acting field. And you know he look good. Okay. Been a host on many platforms. I kind of remember him on Soul Train. But he also is an actor. Which he definitely been in the soap opera world. Which was um, Young and the Restless. And he definitely been in several movies. One currently. um, Not movie but uh, sitcoms. One currently we know him as SWAT. Where he's the lead man. And then we know him as being on Criminal Minds. Okay, well, he really got his acting debut on. But, you know, now it seems like she done hooked up with um, Claudia Jordan, ex-boyfriend, ex-fiance, because they, really, they never got married. So you can't really count that as a marriage, even though she wanted it to be. Don't know who cut it off. Was it um him? Because he's a part of the half and half not cast of Tyler Perry. And he's, you know, blowing up things in that uh, area of career-wise. And Phaedra basically loves to be entertained. So I could see her just trying to be hooked up with a young actor. Kind of giving me a Denzel Washington tease. And pretty much, you know, saying she's with now Medina Islam. And I'm like, girl, please, all those photos you were taking of him and you walking through the park or whatever, they look staged. Like you call a photographer, say, meet us this place, that place, and you can get some photos of me and my new boo. And uh, Lipstick Alice is just having a field day with her. Okay, and that's a commentary gossip site that you can go on YouTube. Just look it up, Lipstick Alley. You have a lot of drama field entertainment over there and they do keep it real but yeah she's messing with claudia jordan's ex boo boyfriend fiance whatever i tell you ever since her and apollo 
just fell off the wagon with one another. She's just been going through a time trying to catch and keep a man. I'm like, whatever happened to her mortician career, her lawyer career, you know, in litigation? She's supposed to be so good at repping, uh, repping with, and, excuse me, y'all, I just woke up. Ugh! Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, she's supposed to be repping around here all our uh, entertainment people, you know. <laughs> she's supposed to have represented Bobby Brown. We know how that went down. And she just been falling off the wagon altogether. She's been dang Capone. She's been caught herself hooked up with Giselle. Brian's ex and probably fathered her last son with him. So it's just a lot of mess she keep going in and out with, especially when it's dealing with these men and reality shows. She has been bitten by the entertainment bug and she wants to get back in it so bad. She's willing to stage events, stage relationships to get invested in them, meaning Bravo franchise, to look at her again as, you know, maybe a candidate to be brought back. I mean, hey, we bring um, Kenya Moore back with all her drama. Uh, she didn't want us to film her or know anything about until after the fact that she had gotten married. I'm like, when did she have time to date? <laughs> I mean, cause we were just dealing with Matt and all of those things when she was filming Real Housewives of Atlanta. I don't forgot what season it was, but she was uh, going around saying he was terrorizing her. Yes, that in the third. So, how did she have time to date somebody as pleasant and charismatic as uh, Mark Daly? Because he don't seem like he get down like that. Because I didn't, unless I lived in New York, I probably wouldn't know who he is. But since I don't live in New York, he never came came across my uh, entertainment radar. You know, he wasn't a person that was just out there, I guess, in those YouTube and social media platform streets. Uh, and, but even if he was really, really well known, you would have heard something about him. Like he hit the uh, Forbes top uh, 100 far as millionaires or billionaires in the world. So he ain't on that iconic status of revenue. So yeah, I guess it didn't fly past me. You know, he just like every little... Uh, entrepreneur that want to be out there making moves, doing things for himself, and I can respect that. But he wasn't on a caliber where somebody's talking about him, where it's hitting all social media's uh, news journalistic or new ju news journals and magazines where, you know, I could say, oh, okay, a brother doing a good job. He doing his thing out there. He's securing his own uh, future, meaning revenue. So, uh, until he just got hooked up with Kenya, then we start knowing who he was, who he's established with, where he's at, what he's been doing since meeting Kenya, you know, all his personal finalities that he wanted to share, that he told Kenya she can share on TV. And then he got to the point where he didn't want to be filmed, she didn't want to be filmed, and now he wants to come back with Kenya more, and they want to do the thing. So, I'm like, shoot, if Kenya Moore can get away with securing the bag again and coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Then why or oh, why I can't? <laughs> Things will come back with all her lunatic ways, okay? It'll definitely give us some drama, especially stirring up the pot with Candy first and all her mess about, oh, if she come, I'm gone and all this stuff. Girl, ain't no, ain't no way in the world unless somebody, you know, uh, put me out of my spot. Okay, uh, 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 revenue bracket as a household name with the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. Uh, I don't care who you are. <laughs> it'll just be drama field and it'll take the spotlight off of Nene Leaks. Okay, then we're trying to see and how we going to get down with one another. Okay, it, it, Nene wouldn't even be a factor. And Nene knows that. That's why she don't want. Uh, Phaedra to come back, I believe, after sitting down, reading between the lines and looking at, you know, who Bravo's bringing back from the past and who they just don't want to bring back. So I think Candy kind of got like a loophole there where she can probably litigate against Bravo franchise if they do bring uh, Phaedra Parks back because all the underhanded stuff she did to Candy and, you know, defamation of character put on Candy's name. But, Lord, we have seen that dungeon escapade play out. And Candy made a cute coin off of that 
allegedly uh, thing that was uh, said and done to her that was damaging her career. She showed, turned it around and made some lemon aid off those lemons that were thrown. So I think, shoot, everything should be really uh, over the, what you call it, under the bridge, across the water, smoothed over, and let's move on, you know. Like I said, she made capitalism, uh, uh, capital money on that false uh, deal that she had a sex dungeon. She was trying to do this and that for her husband to portion, which turned out not to be true. But she made money off that idea that was put out there by Phaedra Paul. So I'm like, hey, uh, turn fair play. You know, it is what it is. It's old news. Let's get with some new drama. And I really believe Bravo just don't want to have excuse me, a bit litigation about that, and that's why they're trying to basically keep her there if they need her <laughs> to start a storyline and to boost ratings, but right now they're going to work with Kenya Moore and need, need leaks to see what they can bring, so I don't think she's totally gone out the picture or their, their thought of bringing her back, meaning Phaedra Pauls. They're just trying to find a legal loophole to justify bringing her back and not making them look bad uh, uh, or uh, making it bad for Candy to film where she can uh, do litigation against them. Now, that's just my thought, my opinion, but I thought I would express it. I mean, getting back to this foolery, okay, this bull feces going on with <sighs> Miss Paul's trying to say, she done found herself a new boo and a, uh, a prospect of a husband. I'm like, girl, where do you go? Do you spend all your extra money that you work hard for by being a... I think she was supposed to be a mortician owner, uh, let alone uh, being a mortician. She went to school for it, got a degree. But I ain't seen nowhere where she's showing that she's been practicing and uh, got her own little... Uh, from her home going. You know what I'm saying? I know she partnership or wanted to partnership with Watkins or uh, funeral home, but never heard anything yesterday. I think maybe it was just a storyline. And now it's just gonna hit the grave and it's pushing up days. It's, I don't know. Okay. Then she's supposed to be this wonderful entertainment lawyer. Okay, and then she started a, a, a modeling career with one of the modeling agencies. I can't remember the name she was supposed to be with, but y'all know what I was she was you Google it, okay? You can uh, show that she was signed to a very reputable, uh, outstanding, and very well known in the communities and states. Uh, some modeling agency. It, it just takes my mind away. I can't think of it right now. But do your Google search. And I'm sure it'll pop up and with some uh, beautiful pictures of Miss Phaedra Pauls. But, I mean, all that going for her, all those accolades, and you still trying to work, uh, run out of the reality bug entertainment series to be put back in your life i mean is it not enough to have all of those professional accolades and careers that you should be pursuing and making hand over money or money hand over fist well for dollars especially with that mortician business because everybody you're gonna always stay in business there because everybody always going out this world okay in buckets and drawers okay so you really should be securing your bag in that because you went to school for it. So why aren't you practicing? Okay, or why aren't you owning a mortician uh, school or uh, or funeral home and have somebody else run it for you, but you own it? You know what I'm saying? That's capitalism. Okay, at its best. But uh, entrepreneurship at its best, I should say. But uh, I, you're not doing anything. You just want to get back on TV. I'm like, girl, I know the money is very surprising and you got to do a lot to stay in that uh, industry, okay? A lot of people don't say it. You got to pretty much sell your soul to be going up here and fooling with these folks and giving us mindless drama here and there. Is it worth it? I mean, you're a Christian abiding woman. You're supposed to be a woman of God. You're supposed to be, you know, doing other philanthropy type stuff, humanity type stuff. But you want to get strung up on all this gossip, lying, backbiting, cheating, stabbing, entertainment business. I'm not understanding, Phaedra Pauls. I'm not understanding. First and foremost, uh, you should be a child of God and you should be raising your two kids, getting into all of their things, keeping it low key until 
you know, you have some help in another uh, relationship where you become married and somebody's wife. And then, you know, then again, your husband might not even want you in the entertainment field. So I, I just don't understand where and when and how you're flowing these days. OK, but I'm just looking inside. I'm on the outside looking in of your world and just puzzled by all of your degrees and your education. You still wants to be an actress or a so-called actress running around here on these reality streets. <coughs> or you want to get you a show and call let us see your acting skill. I don't know, but it's a hot mess. You look at a hot mess to me in the streets to being a mother of two. And trying to sit over here and sashay around here on these uh, YouTube streets and social media streets just to keep yourself relevant. But anyway, she did a long, drawn-out interview with Daily Mail. Uh, co.uk. So I'm thinking it's the British edition, but they do have a, a American edition too, and it's called Daily Mail and not Daily Mail UK. <laughs> So they did a long, drawn-out interview on her on July the 11th, which was yesterday, okay? Because we're filming in the uh, wee hours of the morning, and I'm going to bed after this. But uh, just to read it, it was uh, written by a columnist, uh, not a columnist, a columnist uh, or writer for DailyMail.com. His name was Ryan Parry, Perry. West Coast editor for Daily Mail, okay.com. His headlights, headlights, his headline went to say exclusive. Real Housewives of Atlanta, along Phaedra Parks, reveals she's dating much younger actor after moving on from her convict ex husband, Apollo Nida, who left her son's crush when he was parted back to prison before Father's Day as she spills on her doomed relationship. Okay, that that relationship is gone, doomed. Forget doomed. It has been buried, not resurrected, none of that. Okay, I don't think Apollo wants to be in a relationship other than co-parenting with you because he can make his coins on his own. We still want to know the team what really put him in jail and who he was really uh, going to jail to and protecting because you know he didn't do this crime by himself. That white collar crime when he was embezzling and doing wild fraud and all that kind of stuff. That, but they call it a white collar crime, meaning nobody got hurt physically, but they got hurt mentally because they lost all their money. You know, when folks lose their money, they lose their mind, okay? Two go together, <laughs> especially if they weren't trying to lose it on their own and they were just like uh, tricked out of it. So that's a whole another different horse of another color. But anyway, they go on to write about her, different points they bring out in different bulletins. They say Real Housewives of Atlanta star Phaedra Park has hooked the man of her dreams, a decade younger actor after moving on from ex Apollo Nida. Now, this is my side poem. What happened to Capone? What happened to Giselle Bryant's uh, ex husband, the pastor? Okay, what happened to Shamar Moore? You know, these. Uh, effects of past men shows instability when it comes to relationships because in fact she may still want a Paula Nida but she won't admit to it because it's a good storyline to keep you know ch let the rabbit keep chasing the carrot you know what I'm saying that, is that all right? it sounds right to me so that's why I said it y'all but anyway yeah Apollo Nida has got his own claim to fame and it's very synonymous with his ex. So it's just like they like little Bunny and Clyde running around now. You got Apollo. Then you think about Phaedra. You got Phaedra out there doing news. You think about Apollo. So those two are going to be inseparable. Whether you want to look at it from a messy point standpoint or you're going to look at it from a good standpoint. Doesn't matter. They hook together to death through their part. Okay. Then they go on and say uh, another bulletin point they brought in was while Parks is coy about the identity of her new hunk, Daily Mail TV can reveal she's in fact dating Hunky after Medina Islam, who is 10 years her junior. Again, she's just setting herself up, positioning herself in a way where it gives you the assumption or gives you an insinuation that she's involved with this man and he's involved with her. Personally, I feel it's just a setup. She just got somebody to uh, photograph them. She probably told him where she's going to be with this actor. 
and, and make it look, she's going to make it look like they're in a relationship because she's going to lean on him. She's going to hug him. She's going to do all these things that appear or make the naked eye or viewer appears that she's in a relationship. Yes, I think she done paid the man. He's an actor. That's what he does. He's on Have and Have Nots. Tyler Perry's little sitcom series. So, you know, and she knows Tyler Perry, you know, so, and she can, um, you know, move around and, and, and rub elbows with some of the actors here in Atlanta because she was a well known and still is, in a sense, uh, actress herself when it comes to these reality stars because they don't really show us what's really getting down deep and dirty, which that's what reality was about when they first brought reality TV shows and sitcoms and all this out for us to view. It's supposed to be your real life. We're supposed to see you uh, struggle and master it or not master it. We're supposed to see you excel in different endeavors you're in and just everyday walk of life, things we do uh, throughout our daily day. Um, and that's what you're supposed to be giving us, but they don't. It's all scripted. They show us and tell tell. They show us what they want to show us after they done edited uh, drama field stuff that's going to bring in ratings to keep everybody paid. Because that's what it is. Drama fuels paychecks. Okay? If you don't have drama, if you don't have a show, means somebody's unemployed. Okay? Because there ain't nobody watching. Okay? Because nobody's filming. <sighs> so, just moving off of that. Because, I, like I said, I really don't believe it. You know, the, even the pictures that she gave us that I gave y'all. That I found on the internet don't even believe, don't even show me any uh, believable that it's a relationship. She had more chemistry with her ex husband, Apollo Nidal. Okay. And even when they were going through the bad spill before he got locked up for the crimes he committed, you know, you could tell there was love there, there was hate there, there was just indecisiveness there, there was confusion there, everything. They were giving me everything you could tell through the photos and the filming. But if this man she done drove a, a, a deal or made a deal with Mr. Islam Medina, child, please, first and foremost, remember he's an actor. If you looked at the photos I provided for you that she had taken of herself and him in a casual date or, or, or interaction they were having, it all seems fake and uh, what do you call it? I don't want to say screenshot, but it was just all. Uh, posted to look a certain way, you know, and <laughs> it didn't show or make me think relationship. It made me think false relationship. She's just trying to stay relevant in these streets and be talked about. That's all to make her gain more leverage to get back on her show that she definitely wants to be on, which is Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. No pun intended. She, you, Cause you don't have to be a wife these days to be on these shows if you were a former wife or whatever or engaged, they'll take you. They'll take you. Or if you're looking for love, they'll take you. Because they definitely need some more real decent action and drama going on on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay? They just don't want to switch it up. They don't want to mess with the formula right now. Because it's treading water, but at least it's moving. <laughs> but it's sure going to be moving, grooving, making ways when Miss Kenya get back into the the uh, feel of things, all right? Because I'm sure she's going for the HBC in charge, and that's Nene Leaks. And I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. But anyway, another side bulletin they make on this farce of the story that Della Mel uh, called herself having an interview with Phaedra Paul, and she's just giving them what she wants to give them, which is a bunch of lies. Goes on to say, Park says she has found her glow with Islam after the divorce of Nada in 2017 following his arrest for identity theft and bank fraud. The 40-year-old actor, I mean, I'm sorry, you might as well call her Attica. That's pretty much what she's acting like. But it just says the 40-year-old was released from prison in June and sent back nine days later, much to the disappointment of her two sons, eight and nine and Dylan six. She also said there's a box of Father's Day cards they've made. My son was like, so daddy will be here for Father's Day. And I had explained to him, nope. And she, they probably was talking about Aiden because Aiden was their firstborn. Looked just like Apollo. Going to favor him till he push up daisies. And um, it's just, a, you know, that's his baby. Now the other one, Hine and Dylan. I don't know where he come from. Cause he looked just like Phaedra and uh, possibly <laughs> Jamal Bryant, if you really want the tea on that. He kind of favors uh, 
Jamal Bryant. So take a look at my uh, visuals. Go back and and because I got some pictures of Dylan in there, and just kind of you know put them side by side and let me think. Tell me what you think. Okay, might be proof in that photograph. Okay, let's say proof in the pudding is proof in that photograph. So it is what it is. Okay, allegedly, don't quote me on it. Don't uh, say, well, yeah, you said, it. yeah, I said, it. and that's what I believe. But that's my opinion. But you know. Don't put hold me to it, cause I'll be just as shocked if it turns out not to be as you are. Okay, but it just is what it is. Okay, then it goes on to say another bulletin point. Part said her marriage would not have fell apart when she realized he had been lying to her about his financial crimes after spending a hundred k on his legal fees. Okay, but I mean, when you get married, that's what you're supposed to do. You both go down with the shield, especially if everybody was faithful. Okay, uh, in the relationship, no infidelity. You, you you know, bad. It's supposed to be for good or worse, bad or good. Well, for worse, or, what is it called? For better or for worse, rich or poor, sickness and in health. Do you remember them? Were they a part of your vows when you were uh, getting married? <laughs> Does it ring a bell, Phaedra? Those things you're supposed to do. But like I said, I don't know what kind of relationship. We only saw the end, the beginning, some messy, messy, messy in the middle, and we saw an ending. Okay, and it wasn't all in Apollo's favor, which I know favor has something to do with. She ain't gonna mess up, but I know she do. She knows she know what's going on, okay? But then it goes on to say Phaedra Park sat down for an exclusive two part interview with Daily Mail TV, revealing how her glow is back after meeting an actor, uh, which she's talking about, Mr. Islam Medina. And talks of her struggles of being a single mom. In part two of the interview, which airs Friday, parts talks of a possible return to Real Housewives of Atlanta and her infamous feud with former co-star Candy Burris. Okay, it just goes. It was just too much to read because even that even got me. But if you really want to know where it is and you want to cover the whole story, the whole interview, uh, check out uh, DailyMail.co. Dot UK plug in Frazier Parts reveals um, new bow or reveals uh, Medina Islam as her new boo. You know, I'm sure you can um, look it up, but just go on Daily Mail website, which I just gave you, and just write up in the comment browser bar exclusive Real Housewives of Atlanta Frazier Parts is dating a much younger actor and it should come up. Uh, to the article, the information I'm getting this story from. Because it's just too much, you know. It really is. I mean, they did a story because they felt they needed to do one, I guess. But I'm telling you, the pictures of her walking in the park with this man, he just looking like, oh, please get this picture because I can get away from you because you're just too old for me, girl. <laughs> you're doing too much, you know. I don't want to really be hooked up with you. But if it's if you're gonna give me a little cute coin and it's gonna provide many more acting possibilities, then I'll go with it. But I mean, it just really looked like she happy or faking happy. But he looking like girl, get away from me, you know. Stop coin up, stop, you know, being that close to me, you know. But then okay, I'm an actor. You paying me allegedly, so I gotta play the part. I gotta play the part. So. That's pretty much what she's giving me, what he's giving me. It, it doesn't look like it's uh, a real relationship going on or anyone that's, anyone that's trying to form between the two. So she's just pulling out a leg, trying to uh, have more content to put her as a favorable possibility of bringing her back, even if, if only it's only for a few episodes, you know. Or whatnot, but to get back in the door is better than being outside that door, is what Faith Parts is thinking about. You know, she got some little legality gain wisdom about herself on trying to position herself to have some good storylines and stuff, but it ain't gonna hold up, especially when you're talking about her romantic life. But folks ain't gonna really put themselves in jeopardy and their career in jeopardy of food with her. Hell, they saw what she did to Candy. <laughs> so, fair about. Fair play, turnabout. It, you know, it's just, it, mm -mm. nah, they got time to be messing with Frazier like that. But if she want to drop a cute coin and play a part, and then I can easily say, we were, you know, we were just friends kicking it. Then that gives them an out. Then say, nah, we were connected. We were in a deep relationship. We were looking forward to being a couple for longevity. Nah, they don't want to play that part. But they'll play this little here and there. That's why I said that radio 
uh, personality person, Capone, uh, he was like, uh-uh, you want to do too much. I always signed up for this, that, and the third. I didn't sign up for this other thing you're trying to make me be a part of. No, nah, we just got to break up. We'll publicly break up, but we'll make it amicable. <laughs> and he got rid of Phaedra. Just like she tried to do that thing with Shamar Moore, trying to insinuate that they were together. When he's like, okay, she's not going to drop these rumors because I'm tired of them saying I'm hooked up with her when I know I'm not hooked up with her. And I'm trying to get other women invested in me. And they keep, you know, bringing her name up. So he went on his social media and he just called it like it was. No, he don't know her. He just met her on uh, Andy Cohen's show, I think it was. They kicked it. They talked. They had a good time. They had many drinks after a while. Everything started looking good to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he was just doing, uh, uh, uh being flirtatious, uh, innocent flirtation. But for us to say he was with Fraser Paul, he shot down all of those uh, opinions or rumors that was, you know, going out. He wished her well, but he didn't want to play that part. So Fraser will put dirt out there and she'll let a similar similar when it's making her look good. But when it's posing a bad light for somebody else, Jamar had to step in and say, no, baby, you ain't even put me with you because it's not that kind of party. I'm not interested in you. You're not my type. Da, 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 da. And he got those uh, haters or seekers of possible truth uh, to make a storyline. He shut them down, girl. He like, uh-uh, I don't get down like that. She ain't even my type, okay? She more looking like my mother than anything else. <laughs> so that was a hot mess. But y'all, I'm tired now. I'm tired. After I got into this store, I like, girl, she just really doing too much. She just like a cougar wanting to get back into the game. But, you know, that reality door may have passed her. She need to get back to her career field uh, jobs. She always talked about when she was on Real Housewives of Atlanta. So instead of trying to uh, get back into the range. So, I mean, reality TV must pay real good money. To be sitting out here and want to be a part of it so bad. Because Lord knows she wants to get back in that door. I'm like, Andy, let her back in. If it ain't nothing but for one or two episodes. <laughs> let her back in, child. Because you going to let Kay and all her mess. And other uh, people you don't brought on the show. Bring her back, honey. You brought Sheree back. We still looking for those joggers. those That clothing, athletic out. Uh, what we call it? Uh, outfit. Line she's supposed to be bringing out clothing line. <laughs> Child, stop it with the mess, Andy Cohen and the Bravo franchise. Ugh, franchise. I'm really going to have to get off this too because I'm just doing too much. I don't talk too much and I know y'all tired. But anyway, hope y'all like the video. We'll be back with more commentary coming straight from the correspondent, which is myself, Deb Chanel's 48th World, Deb Chanel, Miss Deb, however you want to call me and see me, okay? You might have other choice words for me, but it's all good. I love my haters. I love my people that love on me. And that's it, okay? Be blessed. Take care. And I'll see you next time for another story. Entertainment story, that is. Good night.